Hi, my name is Paco Nathan, and we're here at the O'Reilly Artificial Intelligence Conference in New York City. It's a pleasure today to be joined by Rajendra Prasad, who is the Senior Managing Director and Global Automation Lead at Accenture. Rajendra. Paco, nice meeting you. Very good to meet you. Very good to meet you. Uh, one question. Uh, what are the challenges for implementation for a, a, a successful AI adoption strategy? So. We've been doing AI conversations, AI implementations, AI discussions with lots of our clients and the technology organizations. One of the biggest challenge that they all talk to me when I speak to them is they first get very excited with this you know, newness of AI right. and then say, let's try it out. Right. But then they try to do use case by use case, one use case here, one use case there. Mm. And then over a period of time, they have built a silos of AI implementation. Oh, and some gone to some far, some just in the initial stages. I call it as building a silo implementations within an enterprise, not having a holistic view of AI implementation. Right. So my biggest suggestion and advice to most of the leaders that who I speak to is, do not do AI if AI is not required. Okay. You know, understand what's your business challenges and do not build this silo-based AI adoption approaches and build a holistic approach. Yes. Wonderful. Well, uh, this kind of work, architecting AI, does this need rethinking from more uh, conventional architectural approaches? Absolutely. Okay. See, uh, over a period of time, we know that the technology of AI, data science, all of that exists for a long period of time. However, we, you know, last few years, we have got a lot of development, improvements, and a lot of things happening in AI world. I come from software engineering background. You know, software engineering has a very traditional discipline approach, right. be it a traditional waterfall development or an agile development kind right. of concepts. Right. So what we have been done very successfully talking to our IT leaders and systems leaders and the technologists and the business users who are responsible for AI is to embed what I call as the discipline and the methodology aspects of software engineering and drive that with an engineering mindset in AI. Let me take a simple example, Thanks. right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to run AI using an agile development, how do you define sprints within AI development? Mm -hmm. Be it data curation, data consumption, data capture, data harvesting, data analysis, any aspects of the data that you want to do, what's your sprint? Do you want to do all of them in a sequence or do you want to do each of those as a different sprints? Ah, How do you approach that? I, tomorrow I will be also talking about uh, microservices as an aspect within AI. How you apply that? DevOps, you know the new concepts of Dev and Ops together running to the run of right. run part of the AI. All of these software engineering principles can do a better handshake with the AI, and then that's what I call as applying. You know, looking at AI development in a slightly different lens and applying more proven, if I can say, software engineering techniques onto AI. So in a sense, it sounds like uh, taking these notions, which are, are well known in engineering and the value of this, and eventually you're going to have to cross that bridge anyway. Correct. Taking those principles and moving them, refactoring them into yeah. the, oh, very good, yeah. very good. Um, how about uh, the value realization from implementations of AI? How do you track that? Absolutely. So we have a we have created a concept called AI Value Wallet. Okay. Okay. The way we ask our implementation teams and the peop the engineers who takes the AI uh, use cases, AI aspects to the field is to identify upfront what's the effort, what's the business benefit, mm -hmm. are we behind speed to market, are we behind mm -hmm. cost optimization, oh. are we behind customer uh, experience. And if you convert that into an equivalent, quote unquote, dollar value, how much of that you're going to deposit into this value wallet? Right. And we have a segmentation by automation, AI, data analytics, data science aspects, and you, you measure the value around that. And as you go through that, the, you know, you, the investments into AI hmm. has to offset the value that you put in, then you start making profitable AI, if I can say.
Okay, fantastic. So starting out though, understanding that contrast of where the organization is currently versus where they could be. Correct. Interesting. And you know, y that's a very good point because what the way I say, if you if you know the uh, one of the quality guru in Watts Humphrey, he says that if you do not know on a map where you are, no. the map won't help you. Right, right. So an important aspect of this value realization and value creation is mm. to make sure that you kind of identify where you are, put the AI uh, use cases, and most importantly, always remember, if it is not required to be AI, doesn't need to be AI. Right. It can be a simple automation solution, and that kind of drives the value generation. And, and the key to this holistic view. Absolutely, getting a holistic view. Wonderful. Uh, what do you see, uh, or rather, how do you see the future workforce transforming, though, with respect to, to this AI revolution that's going on? As you have seen in the keynote presentations today in the morning, one of the biggest uh, challenge for the AI community as we move forward will be creating the community and the expertise, competency, mm -hmm. skill dictionary that is required for AI. And it was very interesting stats that I saw in the morning. Yeah. So one of the things that we do in the organization is we focus very specifically to build AI skills. Mm. I call, we have a pyramid of AI expertise building. At the bottom of it, I call it as AI prime. Okay. Or a data prime, a data scientist or a data expert prime. It is very simply two to three years of experience you pick up a specific technique like DL, D, N, NLP, okay. or uh, you know, uh, if you want to do uh, data science, uh, particular you know, descriptive, prescriptive, predictive, or you know, regression right. models. Right. You know, one specific area, but build a deep expertise in that area. Okay, and then once you do that, you kind of build some algorithms, some models, and then you go to the next level, which is called AI architect. Then you architect a solution that can actually seamlessly fit into the ecosystem of the technology landscape of an enterprise. And then you graduate to AI coach, okay. wherein you can then identify the use cases, the value valid aspects of it, where you are, and also taking the deep expertise you built in each of those areas, right. and then get there. Finally, you become an AI champion. We built this career model very consciously and we drive all of our workforce employees through this to get graduated through that and we give them you know certifications and we recognize them we capture their competency and proficiencies within the system so that they can actually build a road map of learning across the data science across the ai across the software engineering bringing all three aspects together and then be able to deliver ai in an efficient and effective and with a focus of user experience and customer experience impacting business experience. Oh, fantastic. This is building the individual, but also building the organization and, and the linkages DNA, between. Yeah. Yeah. I call it the organizational talent fabric that we built, oh. and that's the AI fabric, and very conscious effort, very conscious investment, learning, you know, being part of the community like the one that we are in last two days, and right. the next two days we're going to be in the sessions. Right. This is an important aspect of building that expertise in our organization. Oh, fantastic. Uh, what are some of the practical tips or considerations in terms of implementing AI at, at scale in enterprise? So the very uh, when whenever we approach AI, it is like a big change effort, right. right? Once you get through the, you know, yes, it is good, it's interesting, it's fancy, it's new thing. Then when you get to the reality, you need to drive change within the organization. Right. You have to, it is like any technology change that we managed in the past. Right. Starting from, you know, computers to data to AI to, mm -hmm. you, know, the, you know, every transformation that we have seen, right? Mm -hmm. Change management. What are the three key aspects of change management? People, process, and technology. Right. In my view, technology is easy because mm -hmm. you can learn ML, you can learn deep learning, you can learn neural networks. You just have to learn it. So much open source. Absolutely. Yeah. And process, you can define the business processes, AI development processes, and tell people that this is the process. What's the toughest part? Right. People. Right. Building a constant AI expertise, change mm -hmm. management program, co-opting them. I call it as being it's applying AI in a very simple steps. You know, identifying 
you know where it makes immediate impact does this use case really make an impact can i apply simple discipline like s microservices right. data engineering then you make without disturbing your enterprise ecosystem of technology then building the people capability then continuously in putting the innovation back into the system right, right. so it's like a cycle so i call it a simple seamless scalable and sustainable approach you have to go through those steps make it simple don't interrupt the technology ecosystem and then scale it by involving everybody in the organization creating a talent fabric within the organization then put up a mechanism where you can get continuous innovation back into the organization right that feedback fantastic thank you prasad thank you very much nice meeting you very good to meet you